the ones they're talking about the most common one now the male and female condoms yeah have you ever seen a female condom <laughs> 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 you know the question was like have you ever been inside <laughs> I've never been uh, inside a female condom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not answer that one, but I yeah. will answer the fact that I have seen yeah. female condoms, even though they're very rare. Okay. Because, like, in our society, people don't tend to use them a lot. Yeah. But, yeah. The mechanics of using them, again, are a bit... Uh, un- uh, some some people are going to say awkward to them because mm. you have to put it in first and then... Mm. <laughs> and then now you... I'm going to be finally be able to go in row. Man, it seems you're speaking from experience. I wish you are. Misa. Yeah, but uh, last last episode we got nongea to we did an episode on infertility last time. Yep. And the struggle for parenthood. Now we go a complete 360. A complete 360. How what about the people <laughs> who don't want to be parents? Yeah, people who don't want to be parents or to kushika ball. Mm. Yeah, I think there is a whole wide variety of things that lead to that. Okay. For example, people who are in relationships that are not yet compounding to marriage. Okay. And maybe aren't ready to have children. Okay. I think that's something with us millennials and mm. Gen Zs. We are going to be delaying. Mm. Are we, is it like running away from responsibility? Some people might think it's that. Some people just might put it in the way that they aren't ready for such responsibilities. If kuna time when I had big year as the cat, mm-hmm. he showed me that responsibility in go. Yeah, it's, it's it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done no lie. Yeah, so today we're going to explore different types of contraceptives, try to simplify it. Yeah. And also just try and explain to the general public about maybe how to use it, how to use it, what are the side effects. Yeah. But uh, the specifically what is there's no such thing as like the best contraception yep but uh, all forms of contraception are individualized yeah it's tailor made to different individuals to different needs mm. yeah, so again welcome to laughing lab court me naitwa elias mohammed me naitwa dr dimbel karibu episode 2 uh, tunajaribu tunangangana yep uh, trying to put up the content for you guys yeah the last episode reception was good mm, thank you for liking it by the way thank you for interacting Mm-hmm. Again please like share subscribe follow tell a friend and um, tell a bestie to tell a bestie exactly yeah this time round how my bestie when you're my bestie when you're kulana how ataki kushika mimba this one's for you my people this one's for you my bestie <laughs> so let's get to it i guess for contraceptives the we can break it down into two main types of contraception mm-hmm. there's the non hormonal mm-hmm and the hormonal i think we can start with the most simple ones the non hormonal ones the non hormonal ones yes yes, yeah. yes so to give some non hormonal ones to manisha his in vitu ambazo they do not have any form of hormones at all yep they can be either mechanical or devices yep. mechanical methods of contraception or devices yep so to kiongea kuhusu mechanical ones we're talking about the most common one now the male and female condoms yep have you ever seen a female condom <laughs> <laughs> you know the question was like have you ever been inside <laughs> have you ever been inside uh, a female condom <laughs> I'll not answer that one but I yeah. will answer the fact that I have seen yeah. female condoms even though they're very rare okay because like in our society people don't tend to use them a lot yeah but yeah the mechanics of using them again are a bit uh, and uh, some some people are going to say awkward to them because mm. you have to put it in first and then Mm. and then now you are going to be finally be able to go in row man it seems you're speaking from experience i wish you are <laughs> life in uganda uh, life, yeah. <laughs> i wish you are yeah i wish you are uh, female condoms then we have the male condoms mm-hmm. male condoms kuna kwanga na very very big many brands Yeah but kuna brand moja miu ni fresh lakini sijawahi tumia ni hiyo Rafrida. Kura kura there's one called Rafrida. Unajua yona? I haven't seen a Rafrida. Kuna una gari. The one that we grew up watching. Have you seen that uh trust in you know when we were kids? Advertia there's that trust. advertia trust. Eh. Where that chick everything she touches it just glows up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that one? <laughs> 
<laughs> if you watch that you yeah. need to be married with kids kuna ingine kuna ingine ilikuwa na jama kuna dema kuna umbrella and then the guy comes the friend if you want that one now come for single uh, you need prayers lazima we need prayers bana wa yeah so condoms i feel are uh, the most common known barrier method mm-hmm. it's an unhormonal type of contraceptive the chances of you getting pregnant are less than 7% 7% so it's very rare is it advisable to use like kuna watu wanatumia like two condoms in one do you know you tell it a friction yeah eventually that, that, that doesn't solve the problem one is enough one is enough it yeah. was created for you as kids tukiwa tunaishi Mombasa tukiwa tunachukua kulikuwa na condoms more kwa beach zinakuwa washed ashore so we'd come and pick them tunazifungua tunazijaza maji those things can hold around 15 liters of water bro imagine so we say many 20 ml it's no uh, biggie See big. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any known side effects you know of? Unless you have allergy to latex. Latex allergy, yeah. Yeah, but even if you're allergic to latex, there's latex free condoms. Yep. The latex free condoms. So most probably the most common issue might be allergies. Mm-hmm. Now the next one we can go to for barrier method is the intrauterine copper devices, IUCD. Um before we go to that, mm-hmm. that would classify it as a intrauterine device but mm-hmm. uh, but it's not a barrier per se not call it a barrier yeah, it's not barrier it's just part of the non hormonal part of types. the non hormonal kuta kuna kongana zile cervical caps and cervical caps yeah it's as as we are spams kuingia yeah. ndani yeah and the way you it's you just put it on the cervix but the thing is it doesn't have a high propensity of preventing pregnancy but mm. if you use mm. it together with spermicidal creams yeah then that in itself can can reduce the chances speaking on spermicidal creams again we are echoing the use of the vaginal pressuries mm. as uh, not not uh, shown to have any efficacy in terms of vaginal cleansing no. and, they, and the spermicidal they prevent they will be pre- killing the sperms out there they don't help at all mm, they, they don't they only have all. negative effects negative at the effects. end of the day So when we go to these copper devices mm-hmm. it's very small it's very small alafu na kongwa imeshape kwa shaped kama T yeah uh, so very very funny question yeah the macona are you cd and as a pig on a steamer yeah in asa panika lightning if you can kwa uterus how is this lightning how is this lightning be delivered <laughs> <laughs> it depends who's delivering it <laughs> yeah yes, for these iucds what what happens is initially they aren't t-shaped it's when you implant it into the uterus because there's a device you use mm-hmm. you get it through the cervix mm-hmm. implant it through the uterus then it forms a t-shape it angles inside the uterus and then it has some threads that come out the cervix yes so how this one works is basically it creates a hostile environment mm. for, for the fertilization fertilization to occur or even implantation to occur yeah. so uh, but this thing it's it stays there for around 5 to 10 years yeah, you can actually have it for a long time the efficacy reduces with time with time yeah mm. and uh, it, it can be removed i think it's i think it's one of the safest means of contraception yeah Uh, it's very safe very safe and it's like it when it makes a toxic environment it's actually spermicidal it kills the sperm yeah so uh, when we move moving forward from this copper we can go to other a uh, non hormonal means mm. you go like people who plan their ovulation the time their ovulation mm-hmm. the natural method of timing the ovulation yep how this works about is in the phases of uh, hormonal phases of the uterus There's usually the luteal phase and the the other phase the endometrial phase mm-hmm. so in the luteal phase usually a constant 14 days mm-hmm. so luteal phase occurs after ovulation has occurred and then what is left behind is the corpus luteum yep corpus luteum we want to secrete progesterone mm-hmm. so the progesterone its function is to maintain the pregnancy yep so a lady who has say a cycle of 30 days mm-hmm. she we expecting her to be ovulating around day 16 Mm-hmm. or uh, plus or minus two yep and that is where the safe days and the non-safe days come about yeah yeah this one again of the non-hormonal means mm-hmm. yeah uh, there's <laughs> there's also the normal old school way of pull out pull out game strong mm. how would you rate your pull out game out of 10 five <laughs> <laughs> not that i know i've never experimented i did jarib when that's just guesswork takubali hata mimi yangu ni guesswork mimi nasema ni 2 week 
I don't know. Is it me? I don't know. Alafu naambia na is it me or is it you? <laughs> Why are you always lie? <laughs> She's stronger bro. Her attraction is stronger. Man. Yeah. So we'll move on right aside from this the non hormonal means we mm-hmm. go to the most common ones. The not the also very common the hormonal method of contraception. Yeah. contraception. For that you can then subdivide it as well because the hormones that are involved is estrogen and progesterone mm-hmm. how they work is like they prevent production of gonadotrophin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus mm-hmm. which is a part of the brain that secretes enzyme producing enzymes okay. that's the word you would use yes. anyway these gonadotrophins are luteinizing hormone and uh, FSH. fsh yes so those two once they're inhibited by progesterone mm-hmm or estrogen mm-hmm. they prevent the formation of the corpus luteum as you are saying yes they prevent uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the other these two to be ovulation to come about yeah. so they they i- i- prevent ovulation in its fact yeah so those those oral co- combined contraceptives or the progesterone only contraceptives that's how they work now as you break it down there the oral combined contraceptives mm-hmm. which is both progesterone and estrogen bases together together and mm-hmm. there's the progesterone only only yeah so this ones uh, there's the combined ones are these ones that are i think majority of the women are usually, usually given that mm-hmm. uh, they're taken for around depending on the cycle of the woman mm-hmm. 21 days of uh, hormonal pills with 7 mm-hmm. days of uh, exactly. supplemental you take it continuously for mm-hmm. 21 days those seven days of menstruation you stop or you can take placebo pills yes then you continue the cycle but for progesterone only mm-hmm. you have to take it continuously you have throughout. to take it consti- continuously yeah. they, they have the issues with compliance again there's issues with side effects most commonly within mm-hmm. this this too yeah yeah uh, other than contraception use they also have other uses yeah they also have other uses so they're used for hypergonadism for example mm-hmm. acne mm-hmm. or hirsutism yeah hirsutism by hirsutism doctor and manisha if you have a lady with male sim- male features mm. like hair beard yeah, yeah, be- yeah. Mm. Uh, okay i'm not going to say what you're going to say <laughs> say you man yeah, you this imagine, is a you, peaceful space you, imagine them walk on a beard and from escape <laughs> Hold mine hold yours. <laughs> so yeah, you can use it to treat that. You can use it for treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yes. You can use it for dysmenorrhea which is pain during menstruation. Mm-hmm. So combined oral contraceptives and contraceptives in general have other uses other than contraception. Other than contraception. Even yes. endometritis even can endometritis. be used. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and even abnormal uterine bleeding mm. you can use for management of that. Yeah. If we speak in terms of the people who are not supposed to use such uh, mm. pills especially the ones containing the estrogen. Mm. Uh, one most uh, the, some of the people who are in this bracket are people who are ladies who are above the age of 35 exactly. and they have the, a smoking habit. Just generally women who smoke mm-hmm. are not advised to take this because it predisposes them to having conditions like stroke stroke you yeah. you are having something called Adenosal. venous thromboembolisms yep where by that we mean that the blood forms clots mm. and these clots travel now can stick in your leg and you have one leg swelling mm. the clot can then travel all the way to your heart to, to your lungs brain. to your brain yeah. you did a very 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 nice uh, piece on p2 and it's co- and how its potential side effect is thromboembolisms yeah cuz we saw and i'm i'm sure you saw as well mm. in the facility mm. you were mm. working at there is a steady increase in the number of that condition where people come with ruptured fallopian tubes mm-hmm. and then they continue using it and then they rupture another one so it leads to infertility in the long term okay. so i believe that when you're using contraceptives you shouldn't use emergency oral contraceptives regularly i'm not completely condoning it you mm-hmm. can use it when there is an emergency that's why the word emergency is there yes and if it's, 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 it's people the people who use it like uh, every other day Yeah, yeah you shouldn't if you see that you're in a relationship where you you are having unprotected sex it's better you just get to those oral combined contraceptives or you have a long term contraceptive plan mm-hmm. and we can go to the next one now in the hormonal therapy where there is the long term progesterone injections yes where you get it once in three months yes the the depo depo in, progesterone injections yep yeah you can have that or you can have the subdermal progesterone yes depot yeah there's also on the intrauterine 
progesterone one, yeah. which can yeah. go for as long as five years. Yeah, and the mm. subdermal one as well can go from three to five years. Yeah, so uh, those are just bits of the hormonal ones. Yeah, mm. yeah. Is there any other thing that we can add upon that on types of contraception and that? I think that's the basics of it. Mm. Now, yeah. where we can discuss further is, is wait, for example... The, sorry, yeah, let me interrupt you. The mm. temporary and the permanent ones. Mm-hmm. The permanent ones for female where you have tube, bilateral tube ligation yeah. and vasectomy for men. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Your wife telling you she's pregnant after you just had a vasectomy. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know. Uh, that's how you get know. a vasectomy, dudes. If you want to know she's cheating, <laughs> have you watched the office? No, so you know, I'm bad with watching. Yeah, stuff. the office, there's this amazing character called Michael Scott, very funny. Mm-hmm. Now, he falls in love with a chick that they work with, mm-hmm. and this this lady doesn't want to have children, mm. so he does a vas- vasectomy. Then she feels like she wants to have uh, babies, yeah, yeah, then yeah, he yeah, reverses yeah. it, uh. then she goes back. <laughs> so he's like, Slip, snap, slip, snap. <laughs> <laughs> so dudes yeah. vasectomy is a one way road mm-hmm. if you plan on doing it there's no it's hard to come back from it like once you get it reversing it the chances of you getting a child is very rare it's very rare again if we go back to the hormonal ones one of mm-hmm. the side effects the most common on which a majority of the people who use this pills ask is mm-hmm. weight gain yeah does it make you gain weight yes, studies. yes. Uh, people there are cases where people have used this and they have Mm. And uh, put on some bit of mass, but bit it's of not that common. I feel the common ones are the nausea, mm-hmm. the headache, the headache. Yeah, and then kuna people. If you're using, if as a lady, as a lady, if you who is using this, mm-hmm. and she notices the following symptoms like mm-hmm. persistent headache. Yeah. Uh, if you have a case of epilepsy, mm. leg swelling, that's immediate contraindication. Yeah, you have to stop those things. That you immediately you stop it if you have a continuous migraine or if you've never had it a starting migraine that's mm-hmm. one side of your head hurting mm-hmm. you have to stop it immediately mm-hmm. if you lose consciousness while on the drug or have a seizure you have to stop it immediately mm-hmm. if you feel like there's unilateral leg swelling you stop it immediately mm-hmm. and then the other people who are cannot who are not uh, favorable for use of uh, or cocs mm-hmm. are people with uh, liver metas liver masses mm-hmm. uh, suspected breast cancers and all Mm, if yeah. you have acute pancreatitis as well, you should not use it. Any form of liver abnormality. Another thing where you should immediately stop oral contraceptives, if you have yellowing of the eyes or the skin, yeah. immediately stop it because it means it's interfering with your liver metabolism. Liver metabolism. So don't even don't with, Even with people, uh, insulin dependent, diabetes. Diabetes. Because, you know, diabetes itself, it's a risk of stroke. Mm-hmm. Now, adding together with that pill you're taking is mm-hmm. just going to put you at further risk. Yes. So moving on from now, basic definition of the contraceptions and we ha- have seen which ones are which. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, p- the people who say, uh, w- which is the best one for me individually? That's the thing. It mm-hmm. depends on what you want. Mm-hmm. Do you want long-term contraception or short-term contraception? If it's long-term, you can use the depot, you can use the subdermal implant. If it's short-term, then you can use the pills because as we're discussing... How long does it take when you discontinue a pill mm-hmm. for you to get back to your normal cycle? Mm-hmm. It might take for people with a normal cycle mm-hmm. three weeks, mm-hmm. they return four weeks to, back, to return back. to a normal cycle. And how you monitor that is you monitor your menstrual cycles. Once you discontinue these pills and your menstrual cycles are back, that means you're back to ovulating. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what you want. Do you want long-term contraception? Do you want short-term contraception? As okay. well as your own personal medical history. Mm-hmm. If you have any of those things that we mentioned, if you have insulin-dependent diabetes, if you have any heart defects, if mm-hmm. you have any risk of cardiovascular issues. I- issues, if you have atrial hypertension, that's BP above 165 over 95, mm-hmm. then that in itself will need you to be tailor-made for. To be ta- True, true. Mm. So now, we, again, uh, if we move on again from this, we go to return to fertility. After I have had these contraceptions, I have used them, and, and the lady is wanting to okay now conceive. Mm-hmm. She will one of the questions she will ask you if she's using hormonal contraceptives is mm-hmm. how long does it take for uh, the, for fertility a return to fertility after using oral contraceptions? Yeah, for as we said, for return to fertility, it depends on your menstrual cycle. For ladies with regular menstrual cycle, three to four weeks. 
for those with irregular it might take longer two mm-hmm. to three months mm-hmm. but eventually how you monitor it is you monitor your menstrual cycle and if you feel like because recently we were together in the clinic when we met a lady who said she hadn't had her period for more than a year. Mm, yes. You remember that lady? Yes, I remember that now lady. that in itself requires you to go to a healthcare practitioner and now get to find what is causing you to not get your menses because if you don't have your periods it means you're not ovulating which mm-hmm. means you can get pregnant. Yes. Something called an opposed estrogen exposure mm. which is where by your <coughs> uterus and ovaries are only exposed to estrogen mm-hmm. without progesterone this is one of the risk factors for endometrial cancers. Mm. So uh, one advice that give to ladies is please do not self prescribe. Yeah, you should these not hormonal pills they can mess yeah. up your whole system. Mm. It gives you risk of endometrial cancer but it is protective against it gives you risk of cervical cancer and is protective against ovarian cancer. Yes, protective endometrial cancer then protective against ovarian. Yeah. Yes, yeah, protective against ovarian. Mm. But uh, other than that kuna other questions that people come and ask you when they are on these pills. Mm-hmm. Uh how how long are, are they safe in breastfeeding? No. Uh, they aren't safe in breastfeeding especially the estrogen ones because mm-hmm. the estrogen can get into breast milk okay so i would not advise breastfeeding mothers to take estrogen containing contraceptives for progesterone it's a bit safer and then also for mothers who are in the postpartum period i would not advise to take estrogen for the first 4 to 6 weeks mm-hmm. postpartum But, uh, for mothers who actually have given birth there's something called lactation amenorrhea mm. whereby a mother who is breastfeeding has high levels of prolactin hormone yeah, yeah. which itself they inhibit uh, this ovulation. other ovulation yeah. and whereby this mother has uh, reduced chances of getting pregnant exactly yeah, so as long as you're breastfeeding exclusively and with the regular and the in terms of frequency and intensity that's a type of contraception in itself breastfeeding yes yeah, yes yeah, a type of contraception in itself yeah for around uh, works very well for women yep yeah so now again doctor if we move on from this we go to the emergency ones again the non hormonal method the iucd the copper device can also mm. be used as an emergency contraception exactly it can be used for the first five days post exposure to Uh, unprotected safe sex mm-hmm. you can use it to be spermicidal mm-hmm. then you can take the emergency oral contraceptive that's for the first three days mm-hmm. but the most efficient is the iucd the iucd mm. so uh that's that's a very very short discussion on uh, contraception the hormonal non hormonal methods and the emergency contraception yeah yeah I, i what do you think are the potential if you guys have if you guys have any questions on contraception feel free to drop them in drop them down in the comments we will try and as much as possible to respond to them yeah. yeah there's also another thing if you get to feel like you're on contraceptives and you should continuously check your breasts yeah because it's very risky to be on oral contraceptives and you have a breast lump so if you ever feel like you have any breast lump and you're on oral contraceptives please stop immediately and go for a health go care checkup. Go get checked up by your primary care, primary yeah. care physician. Yep. Or primary doctor. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you guys for joining us again. Uh, this was a very short topic again on contraception. On, on the next topic we're going to be discussing antenatal care. We're going to go, be going back to antenatal care mm. and the modes of delivery. Yeah. See you. And how to take care of yourself and your child during that period because I've discussed with a lot of newborn mothers and there are a lot of things that I need we I I think they need to know about how to approach that period when it comes to supplementation mm-hmm. when it comes to the do's and don't don't do's because mm-hmm. it's a very delicate period in time where you're two in one mm-hmm. you're having yeah, the yeah. metabolic needs of two people yeah it's a very delicate period by then once again me and Elias Mohammed My name is Dr. Dimbel, Don Dimbel MD. Don Dimbel MD, yeah. Laughing Lab Coat here. Subscribe, share uh, any questions, please feel free to ask. Yep. Yep, see you. Peace out.